Are cats really our pets? There's a meme floating around that jokes that really they own us. And it's a fun question to ask about a pet that refuses to come when cold or makes eye contact as it pushes something off a bench. But it turns out this is something that academics are taking seriously. Have we fully domesticated the cat? And what might that tell us about our connection with nature? To understand this, we have to take a journey through time and the history of domestication. Dogs are known as man's best friend and they're also probably the oldest. Archaeologists recognise that the domestication of animals is one of the most important transitions in human history. The first example of domestication has long been explored and debated, but one of the oldest examples of accepted dog remains dates back 14,000 years when archaeologists dug up the remains adjacent to humans. The modern dog is descended from a wolf population, domesticated at a time when humans were largely nomadic hunter-gatherers. It's hard to overestimate the impact this has had, with archaeologist Gregor Larson noting that, Remove domestication from the human species and there's probably a couple of million of us on the planet, max. Instead, what do we have? Seven billion people, climate change, travel, innovation and everything. Domestication has influenced the entire Earth, and dogs were the first. Our relationship with dogs is not the only type of domestication, and archaeologists sometimes categorise it into three broad fields. Pets, like guinea pigs and ferrets, livestock, like cows or chickens, and transport animals, like camels and horses. So the story of how dogs became our pets from wolves is an obvious example of domestication, but sometimes it's not so clear, and in fact things get a little bit weird. In the Cueva Stella Arena, or spider caves in eastern Spain, there's rock art that depicts a human figure gathering wild honey from a beehive. So the relationship between humans and bees goes back thousands of years, but is it correct to say that we've domesticated the bee? Domestication should be considered different than taming, which is when a wild animal is brought in, it may be docile and trained to live around humans. Instead, domestication, there should be a close relationship between humans and the animals over multiple generations. The animal should be different than its wild ancestors in appearance and behaviour, and it should be genetically different as well. In the case of bees, beekeepers do breed for particular traits. Higher honey production, reduced aggression, and resistant to disease. So they're widely considered to be domesticated, but this isn't universally accepted. Some people note that they're largely unchanged from their wild cousins, so the domestication can be considered partial at best. To understand human history, archaeologists often explore the connection between human and animals, and this doesn't always neatly fit into boxes. In fact, some of human behaviour changes animals, even wild ones. Archaeologists have long believed that the history of animal domestication largely began around 10,000 years ago, when hunter-gatherers started to grow crops and settle down in permanent villages, the so-called Neolithic Revolution. But it's possible that some animals were domesticated earlier than we think. In fact, early hunter-gatherers could have formed special relationships with wild animal species that influenced their behaviour and their genes. Living closely with animals, including as pets, is a complex and probably very ancient part of the human story. It may even have given rise to changes that we associate with domestication long before the beginnings of Neolithic society. Around the world, people have tamed wild animals in a way that falls short of full domestication, like elephants in India or moose in Russia, but we're also changing animals in the way that we're changing nature. There's research into how cities are impacting how animals evolve. For example, there's mice in Central Park in New York City that have genes that allow them to process fatty human foods. And songbirds around the world have been witnessed singing louder and higher pitched than their wild cousins. And that brings us back to cats. Researchers believe that Egyptians were the first people to have cats as pets around 3,600 years ago. But the connection might date back even longer than that, with cats going and clearing out rice from prehistoric grain sites, with evidence for this found in archaeological sites in Israel. You might have noticed that there are a lot more varieties of dogs than there are of cats, and that goes back to the history and how we've used the animal over time. Dogs have been bred for a range of different purposes, from pulling sleds through to hunting, where cats have largely been a companion animal, so the major variant is just the coat. And even that's a fairly modern development, with different breeds coming about in the 19th century. But are they fully domesticated? Now that goes back to the question about what it means to be fully domesticated. And clearly, they've been our pets for thousands of years, so many people accept that they are. Researchers from Washington University found that by examining the genetics of an average house cat and comparing it to its wild relatives, that they were very similar, noting that we don't think they are truly domesticated. Despite their connections with humans, they're still wild creatures at heart. 
Now you know your cat best, so I'll let you answer who owns who. But the bigger question is how do we want to shape animals in nature and how might they be shaping us? <laughs>